وَسَيِّرُوا صَدَّتِنَا وَسِدَقِينَا الْفَاتِحَةِ فَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَتِيُ اللَّهُ تِيَ رَسُولُ غُلِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And always a reminder for myself and عَبْدُكِ الْعَجِيسُ الْدَائِفُ مِسْكِينُ ظَالِمُ وَجَهَلٌ But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah such a blessed month Rabbil Awwal and so loaded loaded from the realities of the Divine Fire, loaded with the realities of the Heavenly Kingdom and the imitated Kingdom. <clears throat> the imitated Kingdom that they try to recreate from their understandings of Sayyidina Sulaiman And that is the Dajjalic system in which the Dajjal will be entering into this earth using that system. And alhamdulillah that the guidance is giving to us that that kingdom is in the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad its knowledges, its realities and its qudra from Allah to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and to the Ulul Amr, those whom are under the command of the heavens. And so alhamdulillah these realities and this fire of Divine guidance that lights the heart, illuminates the heart and illuminates the path that takes away and dispels every type of darkness that shaitan will be operating through darkness and keeping people in ignorance and the inner illumination and the inner light is the spark that has to be lit. Not the outer light of their brain and that their brain is trying to understand Allah the brain is trying to come to Islam but it's the inner illumination that we're in need of this reality of ta seen tilka ayat al-Qur'an wal kitab in mubeen that we need that reality of ta'aseen and that fire to illuminate and light the heart. That is the illumination that protects us from the magic of dajjal. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. And the magic of the Dajjalic system and the negative energies that occupy the earth that the, the magician operates in a darkness. But if they turn the lights on then you could see all of the magic that's taking place and the illumination that's required. It's through the heart. So the reality of Islam opens in the heart of the believer and that that heart has to be illuminated. So when the deceit that already taking place upon the earth, the inner illumination and the inner light of faith can begin to observe the deceit, identify the deceit and the deception that's taking place. Without that the one whom uses only the external vision doesn't make sense to their eyes. They come across these realities and they say, we don't know what you're talking about because they have nothing from the heart that illuminating the heart. They say, I see with my eyes and I don't see what you're talking about. And the understanding is not from the head but from the heart. 
And only when the inner light and the inner reality is illuminated means the heart identifies the deception. The heart understands what, what's being done to the servant of Allah and the amount of deception being cast upon the heart of the believer so that it can traverse all of these negativities. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with these immense lights and this is the love of Allah the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the way of ishq and muhabbat that they asked last night and that do we rule through fear or do we rule through love? And the description was that these servants whom guide through ishq and muhabbat and the inheritors of the who in which Allah addressed them for guidance and that they use all the faculties of all their senses because every sense has two, has a physical hearing and you have an inner hearing. The one whom only open the physical hearing they're not at the same level as the one whom has the inner hearing and spiritual hearing. The inner hearing can encrypt through all of the deception. It can hear something but hear its reality that what is being said that's not what is being intended. The inner sight sees through the deception where the outer sight ten people can be looking but the one whom Allah opened their inner sight, their firasul and ahlul basira means that their inner sight has an insight that through their vision of their heart they can see that what's being shown is not its reality. And the power of the heart is immense. When we, when we teach these pieces like a tasbih, say, so why do I need this piece? All, all of this is, is the game that Allah has enrolled us. If you don't achieve every level, the higher levels you're not equipped. So means this station of taqwa, this station of consciousness is that it entered by fear. They had to fear punishment so they entered into Islam. They stopped doing the bad but they followed the guides of love because you're not guiding yourself through love. The one whom is guided and whom is rightly guided Allah guides them to the guides of love, not guides that are harsh and mean and hard. But the servant themselves has to have a consciousness and a taqwa, has to have a fear of the boundaries of Allah As a result of their taqwa, their consciousness the fear within themselves that they want to accomplish and they don't want Allah to be angered, Allah guides them to the guides of this reality of who, whom their guidance is with love, with a Divinely character and a Divinely love. For they know the secret is that if they teach by love and they teach by good character that the bond of love is much stronger than the bond of fear. So we all have to fear the limit so that we stop and that we want to come to guidance. When Allah destines the servant to come to guidance, He guides them to these guides of ishq and muhabbat. They say you can attract more bees with honey. Means that you can attract people with a softness in character, with the ishq and love and the muhabbat of Allah and the love of Prophet That the servant is coming and asking that, I don't want to transgress the boundaries of Allah The loving guides they teach in such a way that the servant enters into a sense of feeling ashamed to disappoint their teacher. 
They feel ashamed to disappoint Allah because they taught with love. They made a bond of love and ishq that the servant has to love Allah Love Sayyidina Muhammad as a result of that love it built an immense taqwa. Not the fear of being beaten because they should have risen above that level of badness. But the bond of love is that they do all the good that they can and they still, still feel a sense of shame that they could have done more, they should have done more, they should be excelling in their character and that their representation should be better. And that's a, an immense taqwa that they feel ashamed in the presence of Prophet to do wrong, to do bad, to come against the hearts of the servants of Allah So it means that has a, a very fine line in their guidance. For the one whom has a taqwa and consciousness and wants to come to guidance, if the guidance is hard and harsh it doesn't allow the nuclear and atomic bond that's necessary for the reality of guidance because we don't guide through the head. So in a room of 50 people is always by analogy, if the guide and the teacher is teaching by head like school, do this, do that, do this, do that. And if you don't do it it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this. Everyone in the room is trying to adhere through their head and it's just a course and it's a session based on people listening through their head. Some may get it, majority won't. But what's important in the establishment of this spiritual bond is that the student comes with their heart. And when they come with their heart they say, I don't really understand everything but I have an immense respect for the way, I have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad As a result all of their spiritual faculties are now open to be connected because we said the strongest bond is a bond of love. This is a nuclear bond, when elements are coming together they have to give off an electron, they have to give off a negativity to make a bond and make an atomic bond, a nuclear bond with their reality. Well, Allah is showing that if your smallest element has to do that, well the micro and the micro must be the same. So those whom reflect inward understood that the strongest bond is if I give off my negativity and I come and I bond. That bond that is not breakable is a bond of love, Divinely love that Allah puts the element with a love and it makes a connection. It is the strongest connection. It's a connection that traverses all space and time, all space and time. Because that which you learn through your mind is, is limited to the capacity of your head. You can't connect with anything in the grave and anything within the heavens through your head. But that which you love through your heart and the reality of your soul has built a bond with that reality, with that presence, that bond moves through space and time, doesn't matter what's happened and that when you'll find familiar bonds. Means like when you have a grandparent or a parent whom you love dearly and the bond with them was of a deep relationship to your soul. Space and time is no, no relevance, you see them in your sleep, some can see them while they're meditating. And these are for people whom may be pious or not pious or people whom you love dearly. But in this realm of piety whom their souls are completely awake and free, when you make a spiritual bond with them and make a spiritual connection with them that is the strongest connection. As a result of that connection you're now bonding into that reality for the conveyance of these knowledges and all these blessings and these realities. This has an immense power, this has an immense reality. Means as a result of all of these powers, these lights and these dressings that come upon the soul, these are when these fires and these emanations begin to emanate for the stu student 
into their soul and into their heart. So means then this way is based on the heart, this way is based on opening this reality. This reality and this fire of ishq and this fire of love once it's sparked they have the ability to begin to open that reality and open the immensity of what Allah wishes to dress upon the servant. And then people come and have different spiritual experiences that prove to them that this is beyond space and time. That the one whom the shaykh is opening from their firasul and from the, the light within their heart can look into the degrees of light. Means that through space and time it doesn't matter. Somebody had asked in an email about a vision and the, the, the visions of the shaykh and the connection to the vision of the shaykh that if we understand this world of light and understand the ability that Allah opened within the heart of the servant that they came through a consciousness and taqwa but they entered in through a door of ishq and muhabbat and they made the real bond not the one through the head. If they made the bond through their heart means now they're opening the ability of the heart. If Allah opens the ability of the heart that becomes the hadith that Allah is describing, I become the seeing in which you see and I become the hearing in which you hear. Not the eyes but I become your seeing, I become the faculty of sight will be dressed by Allah's power. And that varies depending upon the servant and what Allah wants to give to the servant. And I become the hearing in which you hear. Then imagine now Allah's hearing on a servant, Allah's seeing on a servant is not like regular. So there was a different email and different discussions and an incident in which a shaykh can look at somebody and look into their eyes. And with the, the light that Allah give to them it traverses all space and time. It's not understandable for most people, it traverses all space and time and that in your life you carry with you two great emotions, those whom you love and those whom you fear. There's a bond on your, your soul, those whom created an immense difficulty because out of fear and hatred you've made a bond to somebody and they occupy yourself free of rent. And then the bond that you make from love those whom affected your heart with an immense love because you made now a love bond. The one whom has a hatred and fear because they inflicted difficulties and incidents and lies, you carry them like a, a tenant or a squatter. They occupy space within your being and inflict upon you emotional concerns and they don't pay any rent, there's no benefit for that relationship. But because of what happened and the person didn't work through their spirituality, they carry these things with them. And the one whom carries what he loves, he carries it on his soul with him. The firasul of the shaykh when he looks into the eyes of the servant has the ability to look into all those relationships because you carry them with your soul. So your eyes are just a door. As soon as they look into the eye of the servant, if they want to examine that reality it's a door. For us to understand they merely look and the door opens, they enter into a room in which all those souls are present with that person, all whom they love and all those whom tormented. And that makes the energy of that person who they are because the vehicle of their body is carrying these passengers. So the shaykh merely looks into the eyes like he entered in and now he's sitting in the vehicle that, who do you have in here? Oh I say, all these people whom you love and all these whom have affected you negatively. And that's why that's the reality or 
a drop of that reality of be weary of the firasul because the the light and the gift in which Allah gives from this reality of taseen that when Allah want to spark this heart with love and spark this heart with this Divinely light and then when Allah is teaching in Hadith Al-Qudsi that, I become your seeing, well then you can imagine Allah's seeing is not something normal and Allah's sight is not limited by any dunya, has no limitation. And that's why Allah attributed Himself within that hadith that, I will become your seeing. Means I'm going to give you godly and divinely sight and each different darajats. Somebody may have entry level and somebody may have very high level and I'm going to give you my hearing. And that was the example of Sayyidina Sulaiman with an army of a hundred thousand men running, horses, knighthood, sh everything sh making noises. He hears the speech of an ant, what type of hearing is that? So when people say, what is your dalil? We are giving dalils but they don't have ears to see or ears, they don't have eyes to see or ears to hear. Every talk is filled with dalil. So people when they're ignorant, they're ignorant. You can make a book filled with dalil and they'll still ask you, give us the dalil. When Allah is giving the example of Sayyidina Sulaiman His armies were moving on clouds and carpets in tens of thousands with all creatures, all beings, all jinn, all demons. His army is moving and he's hearing the talk of an ant and he's laughing and amused by the talk. What type of hearing is that? And this is from the people of Bani Israel, what do you think from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad who owns his hearing, who owns that power of Sayyidina Sulaiman its owner is Sayyidina Muhammad So it's not something that can be understood but Allah gives to us in Surat Al Nam this reality that be careful, now this fire is the heavenly kingdom and with dealing with the heavenly king kingdom don't use your dunya eyes, dunya mind to understand it. That through this kingdom they were talking to the birds and out of the immensity you can't imagine as you don't think his army was like 10 people, his animal kingdom, the entire animal kingdom of that region was under his command and yet he understood one bird is missing. Means that the amount of this firasr, the amount of the ability to hear, to see, to command and that to command through the heart, the amount of the ability of speech and Divinely speech, this is the hadith al-Qudsi in which Allah is describing one of those servants whom I've given my hearing. I've given my seeing, I've given my breath, I've given my hands because whose hands can control a kingdom like that? Means I've given my hands and as a result I've given my feet and he was in command of the wind, his nation was moving through the wind on flying carpets, his entire kingdom could fly over on a carpet. What size carpet was that? And what was the ability to move like that? These are not stories of old but this is the Qudrat al-Ilahiyya, this is the power of the heavenly kingdom that if Allah wants His kingdom upon earth that Allah is giving to us, you haven't seen it yet but let me give you a description in Surat Al-Nam. And this was from Bani Israel, imagine for Sayyidina Muhammad that the one whom owns all of this authority, what Allah has given to them of these realities and these blessings, means the ability to look and to see the relationships of souls and the ability of how people are tormented by these relationships. One, the ones whom they love and they have a beneficial blessing from that love 
and the one whom through events in our lives they torment the person with that relationship. And that's a part of the cleansing, that's a part of their training. In their training they're supposed to go into their reality and those relationships in which they don't like and which whatever events happened into their relationship is that you forgive them. That you forgive them, Ya Rabbi I forgive them, I want nothing to do with this and I don't want to carry this person within my being and within my persona. And your asking of forgiving is not for them, say you say, I don't want to forgive them because I really want to punish them. But your forgiveness is for yourself because like a, like a, like a ghost movie that this horrible person is locked on a chain with you and you're dragging them everywhere and they're in your being and they affect the energy of your being. Your forgiveness was for your own soul, Ya Rabbi forgive them, don't want to carry this garbage, replace this for something much better. Whatever was done as a damage to me, replace it with better and Allah can give you from His infinite bounty. But most human natures they want to carry this like luggage but uh, that's not punishing the other person that punishes yourself because you're carrying them and not getting any rent. They torment and occupy space within your mind and within your being. So that's a separate nature of how to cleanse oneself is you make istighfar and say, Ya Rabbi forgive all those whom harmed me and forgive me for all those whom I've harmed and that you're the best to recompense your servant that if you feel I'm in need of anything or that you'll give me from your bounty, alhamdulillah. But I don't want to carry them around and I'm asking for forgiveness, their forgiveness and my forgiveness for what I've done wrong to people. So that we clean that closet of people and don't let them to occupy our reality. So that has its istighfar, its du'as and that the servant train themselves to be at peace. The past is the past, nothing can be undone from the past, you have to relieve it. Whatever the difficulty was, whatever the abuse was is that you forgive it for the sake of yourself and that you rise. For Allah is the one to give the bounty because you can ask that, I want no, I want an eye for an eye for what that person has done. But that must be, that may be a much lower reward than for you to forgive for the sake of Allah for myself and my own soul, Ya Rabbi I forgive them, I don't want to carry this with me. The bounty of Allah can't be understood, what Allah could open for a servant that since you turned it over to me I'm the most generous of the generous and now I'm going to give you such and such. So always the, the prize behind the door of what Allah can give is much better than what you think you want from your own hand and your own mind and from your own mouth. But in spirituality you carry these souls with you. So when the shaykh looks with firasul all these is, a, is, is the… what occupies an insan and the way to clean them and to rid oneself is to take away the weight and the, the darkness of that. Then when they look in these are the relationships of love that are, are within the being. Allah also is continuously looking within the soul of insan where Allah describes we don't look to the surah, we don't look to their form but we look to their light and to their reality because what Allah wants to see within the heart of the servant is the love and the ishq for Sayyidina Muhammad So it means that everyone's looking into the heart of the servant, that's why the servant's busiest job is to clean their heart, rid it of rancor and hatred and dislike and say, Ya Rabbi you know best and this is in, in your hands, I forgive what was done of wrong and it takes time to continuously forgive and rid. Doesn't mean you go back and you have to be best friends. You basically said, I forgive them so I'm not carrying that burden in me but I want nothing to do with them. That's something completely separate. But to rid them from weighing within your reality 
And that way all that occupies the servant is that of muhabbat and love and we carry within our hearts then the most powerful power is those whom occupy our heart with love. And the gr greatest of love is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.